All the roads are winding. Welcome back to the show, Naomi. It's always a pleasure and so happy to have you here. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. Hi, lovey. Before we begin, would you like to set the space and guide us? For those that are able, just take a moment to close your eyes and welcome the fullness of your breath in, into this body, into this moment. And just noticing how it feels to be right now. Notice the sensations in your body, the thoughts dancing through the mind. And just Keep inviting the fullness of your breath in. When your eyes are closed, it's almost as though you're following, as you follow your breath, you're following the terrain of your inner garden, your inner landscape. Noticing how the breath meets all the unseen places within. And just see if on your exhale you can soften just a little bit more. A little bit more into your bones, softening more deeply into your muscles and into this present moment. You can bring your awareness to if you're leaning forward or if you're leaning back, if you're leaning to one side or another. And without trying to change anything, just noticing where you are and letting yourself know that it's okay to be wherever you are. It's okay to feel whatever is there right now. Let's welcome another breath and let's hold this. It's okay to be wherever you are with us as we journey through this beautiful conversation. Let's take another full breath together. Thank you, dear ones, for being here with us today. That was lovely, yummy. Thank you. So, Naomi, what are your ancestral lineages? So, so far, what I can trace is um, mostly French and German with a little one stopover in Haiti. And um, as far as like DNA, there is basically Northwestern European. (laughs) Basically that general whole area. (laughs) Cool. And where are you now and who are the people of that land? And I'm even feeling called to ask who are the even the non-human people of that land too, because some came in during your meditation. I was like, whoa, hello. So yeah. 
So I am on the island of Maui, Hawaii, and this is native lands to the Hawaii people, the Hawaiians. And this place holds a deep resonance with Lumeria. And there are so many ancestors of non-human form that are present here. And both in the nature realm and the spirit realm. And I don't have names for them, but it is quite a magical, a magical land. Oh, that's awesome. I have not been yet and we'll remedy that hopefully soon. But... We will remedy that. <sighs> yeah, I just saw this like beautiful waterfall surrounded by like green moss and stuff popped in. I was like, whoa, what's up? <laughs> Bay folk, like there's Maui is Maui specifically is very interdimensional. There's so many different, um, there's a lot of biodiversity and we have desert and we have jungle and there's so many different um, ecosystems that you can visit in a day. Uh, it's very unusual. Mm -hmm. So Naomi, you offer teaching around trauma-informed somatic womb healing, and you offer this for people on their personal path and for people who would like to practice this professionally, helping others on their healing journeys and on their spiritual journeys, all the way up to a level of teaching people and certifying them in your hands-on massage techniques that you have developed after working with like 60,000 clients over decades. So I think with a great place to start would be like, what even is somatic womb healing? And how does that go beyond just the womb to, I don't take it wherever you want. Yes, let's get it. So the beautiful thing is after working with tens of thousands of people is you have this ability to track patterns. You can see the different ways that different bodies, different constitutions sort of hold patterns in how they relate to the world around them and how they relate to themselves. And so I developed this body of work after, you know, studying forever. <laughs> so we'll just say forever. Um, the booklet of certifications I have to leave in Colorado because it's too heavy to carry around <laughs> with me. So within everything that I learned, it, the way that I digest and assimilate information, I was able to take that and then put it into practice. And then I was able to see in real life, in action, where a lot of the teachings were missing pieces. That it's sort of like um, a great metaphor would be many of us like, want to study, let's say the law of attraction or manifestation. And you, you listen to the book, you read the book, and then you're like, now, how do I put that into practice though? Like, how do I actually do it? It's the same with clients. Like, how do I actually put everything that I've learned into practice so that I can meet them? And so what I started to see is that the biggest piece that we're missing is being trauma-informed. And many people who say they're trauma-informed are also not trauma-informed. And I think honestly, for myself is the best way I could say I'm trauma informed is because I've been through so much trauma. <laughs> so I, I understand um, what needs to be present so that people feel safe, or at least I can create the space. So that is an option for their system. And then I can know that on my side, at least I'm, I know that I'm holding that safe container and whatever happens for them inside of that is, is part of the, their journey, right? So teaching somatic womb healing and offering that soma is body. And one of the pieces that is missing inside of how we do healing is really slowing down enough to be in presence with just what is. We have this tendency, some of you might've noticed in the meditation even like, oh, I was thinking about the future or I was forward leaning or, right. We have this tendency to sort of like, feel like we have to do, and that's part of the way that society is built. The patriarchy, we got to do, 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 go, 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 capitalism, all the things. 
And so we need, in order to truly meet what's at the root that needs healing, it's actually super simple, but we need to have the skill set to be able to slow down enough so that we can meet what arises. Because if we can't meet those subtle little sensations that have a story attached to them, then we're overriding those over and over and over again. So they're going to keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up. And we're not really taught to, to be with them. Like, right. How many of us, how many of you all, like we have an experience and then we start analyzing it. We try to figure it out. We're trying to like, well, da, 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 da. and if I do this and da, da, we start getting into our mind about it. And so the somatic womb healing is really follows the holy Brinity, uh, the holy Brinity, <laughs> the holy Trinity blueprint that is womb healing. And it's understanding, first of all, that we are interdimensional beings. We're multi-dimensional. We're not just our mind. We're not just our body. We're not just our energy. We're not just our endocrine system. We're not just our reproductive system. We're so much more than all of that. So the holy trinity of, of womb healing blueprint really helps you to one, acknowledge that we are all of that. And so we start with working with the spiritual and the energetic, and then we move into the emotional and the psychological. And then there's also a physical and the physical means so much more than our physical body, right? It's our physical life. It's the job that we have, how we actually relate. It's like everything tangible, right? It's like the touchable, the seeable that we can like taste and smell, which is earth. And so they all work with different elements as well. So if we're not following that blueprint, if we're not in the understanding that we are more than just one thing, then our limited perspective limits our perspective, which then changes and limits what we can actually heal. And so the somatic womb healing is very much understanding that you are also more than just a womb and that the womb is more than the womb. The womb is actually everything. The womb is literally life. So whether or not you are a womb carrier or a wand carrier, you still, we, you still have this sacred opportunity to walk through the Holy Trinity of womb healing because you are alive. You are life itself living, right? And everyone came from a womb too, I mean. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I think that's the best way to sum, to sum it up. <laughs> I love it. And I hear you speaking to this slowing down, which to, you know, I've been nerding out on the nervous system lately. And I jokingly call myself nervous system, Natalie now. And, uh, <laughs> and so what I hear you saying then, like, yeah, but, you know, you're talking about there's feeling these sensations and then there's these stories attached. And if we don't take time to actually be with that without figuring it out, Rather, I, I happen to know this because I've interviewed you before and worked extensively with you. So, um, but but rather this noticing, this witnessing of what's happening in the body around the stories and working with that allows the physical, uh, the whole, all of these elements in this Holy Trinity blueprint to shift instead of just this mental trying to hammer away, hammer away, and putting more nails into it until it sticks or whatever. I don't even know what the other mind's always doing wacky stuff building houses of cards that don't really support anything. <laughs> Big panic rooms. <laughs> Big panic. <laughs> right. But then like forgetting to bring water. Yeah. Yeah. So that happens when we don't understand. Most of us have not been taught. I would say almost all of us have not been taught how to go inside and what to do when you're inside. And I think that even when I studied Buddhism and lived um, in India, studying and receiving the transmissions of the Dalai Lama, I was in my twenties and thirties. Like, I don't know what to freaking do with that. Like you are form and not form. And you're like, what? I don't understand. Like what is going And then, it, you know, there's, there's all these concepts. And so when you're in your twenty, you know, you're like digesting, you're taking it in, but we still don't know what to do 
with what happens inside. Like, do you understand how to navigate the ego? Do you know what is the ego? Do you know all the brilliant ways that it works to really like keep you safe ultimately, but also to deceive you and keep you caught in patterns of struggle and suffering and separation because that is its its kind of purpose is in some ways like the, the way the Oracle showed it to me is like, let's say that we were light and in order to come here on earth, we needed form. And so the ego gave us that form, but then in a way like the ego became over identified with its form. And so it keeps wanting to be like, no, I, this is me. And that is you, right? So that is a part of the truth, but it's not the whole truth. So if we don't understand how to sort of adjust our worldview and question our worldview and look at our beliefs and our indoctrines that we've been given from generations and family and society. And we don't understand how to differentiate what is my ego and what is my emotion and what do you do with emotions? And then we're automatically going to go into the mind and just start trying to either figure it out or avoid it. And that's a, that's also a brilliant mechanism and it's also keeping us stuck. And so what I started to see in my practice is that we all, like, we don't know how to, to do, we don't know how to receive. We don't know how to relate generally in general. We don't know how to relate. We don't know how to like relationships. Relating is literally everything of existence here. (laughs) Like it's it's the core of everything. We have to learn how to relate to ourselves, to our environment, to the ever-changing, the unseen. Like we are constantly in a state of relating and we don't know how to do that. We haven't been taught. And so if you don't know how to go in and we don't know how to differentiate, oh, this is my ego. Oh, that's my mind. Oh, that's my intuition. That's my instinct. And then add on top of that trauma where you've had generations of and your lifetime of being overridden and then overriding yourself because you were told you were wrong or you were told consistently in a gaslighty sort of environment that your feelings weren't correct or your sense or your intuition or your instincts were wrong. So you constantly get that feedback. Well, then you're you're completely out of resonance with your truth. And it's, it's not your fault and not, there's no blaming inside of this. This is just part of the experience. It's part of the journey. And so I feel like these key pieces of understanding the Holy Trinity of healing and of womb healing, if those pieces aren't being met, then we're constantly still in a state of overriding. And then we're not meeting that core. Yeah. A lot of overriding going on. I want to touch on what kind of work were you doing in your practice that you were working with tens of thousands of clients and and tracking these patterns? That's my favorite thing to do is track stuff. Um, Pretty much tracking. It's so funny. Do you know um, what's his name Uh, who has the book tracker and he's, he's like very well known wild. He's a wild um, school guy, Thomas, Tom. Anyway, I remember reading that book and being like tracker, like that sounds cool. Cause I wasn't necessarily good at it. it my skills weren't honed yet. We could say, uh, they were naturally there naturally paying attention to patterns, but they weren't honed yet. So in my practice, it varied from working hands-on with people and doing body work. And one thing that was so fascinating about doing body work is being able to watch and feel. And I'm also a physical, one of my empaths or clairs is physical. So I feel what they're feeling when I'm touching them. And so to feel like where different things were stuck or um, somebody would come in and be like, well, how are you? And they're like, I'm great. And then their body is telling a totally different story. That was like totally not great. And um, people would be like their shoulders in their ears, right? And they'd be like, I'm fine. And you're like, sure, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> like, uh-huh, yeah, I'm sure nothing is going on for you. And and working on lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of bellies. And our bellies tell us a lot because this is, you know, the the weakest sort of part of the body, right? It's the most vulnerable part of the body. And so working on bellies and seeing what's being held and feeling what's being held there and how disconnected people 
are the mind from the body, the mind from the body. It's like two different, it was like two different beings, right? And then being like, what's going on with the energy field? And being like, whoa, this is all, you know, so when you're doing body work, you're not just doing body work, right? You're like still working on all these different other sort of unseen levels. And so it would be body work. It would be shamanism. Um, I was trained with the shamanic medicine women. And so we would do shamanism journeying for other people, journeying on their behalf, soul retrievals and that kind of stuff. And then also sometimes it was just um, clinical nutrition and herbalism and kind of formulating what plant medicines and spirit medicines might be the right sort of prescription to support them. And so through that journey, like really watching and seeing how many people, all of them, sorry, but all of them did not have a, the right way. And it's not my right way. It's just like a clear way of perceiving reality because we get so caught in our smaller self experience that we're like, oh, and then this did this. And then they did that, da, 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 right? We're stuck caught in these stories that it was always about a reframing and looking at, okay, what is your universal worldview? Because what I just heard you say is that you think you should always be happy. And where did that come from? Who told you that? Because if you feel like you should always be happy, then that's a pressure that's always on you. And you're never meeting it. So then you're going to always be unhappy, right? So let's look at those beliefs that started, that started this whole thing. And so I would, so it was a mix of psychology, spiritual healing, spiritual therapy, uh, relationships. So I did a lot of relational work with couples, whether it was teaching them about presencing with one another and harmonizing their energies together and going into like tantric sensuality and why they might be having struggles inside of their relationship based on how they're relating to themselves and each other. And then shamanism and earth-centered healing and then herbal medicine and nutrition. So I was looking really at so many different aspects of a person's life that we all live. Like all of those are part of all of our lives, right? And then for um, working also with the rites of passage. So all the stages of life. So helping people preconception to um, pregnancy through postpartum, through menopause to death. And working with all of those different phases of life. And so I got to see a lot. I got to see a lot. Which has informed everything that I teach now, right? It's like, okay, I got a good. And, and the beautiful thing about the way that I had an opportunity to learn in this life is that it wasn't just like all women, it wasn't all men. It wasn't all one color. It wasn't all one type of person. It wasn't all like I lived in India and we worked with the Tibetan monks and nuns. I lived in Thailand and I worked with the Thai people. I worked in Bali and did um, volunteered at Ibu Robin's clinic doing births with um, Muslim women, right? Like they have a very different relationship to their sex, to their wombs than let's say an American woman, right? So I had the opportunity to travel and to experience different cultures and different people and different worldviews. And there were still very similar patterns that are inside and alive in all of us that were, yeah, similar. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. So let's get into the womb a little more then. Uh, what's What's up with the womb? Like, why is this at the center of what you uh, teach? Yeah. So, you know, actually, I'm going to tell y'all a funny and you're going to laugh and then we'll laugh about it later. So I was not sure why I was drawn to womb healing, to be honest. I didn't have a mother, so that might have something to do with it. Um, I was not a very... Uh, I was not very comfortable with intimacy as a young woman. Like it made me nervous. Um, the idea of touching people was like a hell no for me, like no way. 
Um, you know, when I was in my twenties and there'd be like ecstatic dance kind of things or sec, I was like, no way. I was very modest. I grew up in a, you know, unsafe, uh, environment. And so I didn't feel safe sexually. And so that kind of thing would just be like, Ooh, like, blah, and threatening and kind of scary. And so as I kind of look back now that I'm turning 45 soon and I look back and I'm like, wow, I was my thesis and herb school were all on women's health, women's wellness, womb health. Um, I I just found the painting. I like painted the womb for an anatomy project. <laughs> it's very abstract and cool, but also like, that's funny that that's what you did. And so everything was like pulling me towards that. And then, you know, my teacher was a womb worker and I resonated with her so much. And then we went to Belize together. So there were like so many things that were pulling me to it, but it's not something I consciously wanted to do where now it seems like people are like, Ooh, womb healing. I want to do that. Right. Like I didn't have that. I was kind of like, Ooh, I probably just need it. Like that sounds so scary. And this is before it became popular on Instagram. You know, this was like before all that, by the way, y'all it was before, like before cell phones existed, (laughs) before cell phones, like all of the, yeah, there were a very few books on it at the time. And so. Sounds like the dark ages, Naomi. <laughs> it was the dark ages. <laughs> Definitely back in the day. I was living in a teepee too, y'all. But um, so there, I feel like the reason I wanted to speak to that is because if you're drawn to it or naturally doing it and you, you think, no, like, I don't want to do that. Like it's there, it's showing I I was being guided. And so maybe you're being guided to that also. And so when I think of womb healing, especially now with social media and the way that it's presented, because now it's like, it's trendy. Like it was even on that, like nine perfect strangers, um, TV show with Nicole Kidman. They were like w- hashtag womb healing. It was like, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this is like, yeah, tripping me out. And so the womb though, my loves is the metaphor for everything. As we said in the beginning, it is life. It's the bringer of life. It gives life. It can, it grows life, right? It, so if we look at the womb more as a metaphor, for the conception all the way through death, right? It's everything. It's everything. It's everything. And so then it's more fun for me because I have ADHD and (laughs) I'm a manifesting generator Gemini. So I would be bored. (laughs) It didn't include everything. I think I'd be a little bored. So that's the beautiful thing about womb healing is that it includes everything. So every aspect of your life that you begin to tend to and start to heal, you're helping to heal the womb within and then also the womb of creation. And then the great womb web that is we're all interconnected within. And that's, I love that part. I love knowing that it doesn't have to just be like heal your sexuality right? It doesn't have to be like, just heal your symptoms. It's about everything. And so womb healing in the way that we teach it begins with working with your emotional and psychological landscape, working with how you process your emotions and how you think. And once we kind of can bring light and healing to those places, presence to those places, then we can go to a deeper level. And that is now we can work on the spiritual and the energetic, the spiritual womb of creation, your own spirit womb, your own energetic womb. And then it's from there that then we go and tend to the physical. And there's definitely like, that's more how I teach within sessions. I would say like on a personal healing journey, I will begin wherever the client is. So some of us work better and have more of an affinity towards the physical. We're like, teach me anatomy. 
Tell me how the womb wanders. What do you mean that it moves? How do I tell how it moves? And so we start, we may start there, right? So we want to start wherever somebody can have a greater access point to result really and to uh, insight or awakening inside of that. And then we'll bring in the other pieces. It's so important though, that we tend to all the different aspects that are womb healing, that is womb healing. And just for, because I know, you know, we, the very first workshop we held at EarthSpeak in the collective was, was with you, you taught inner alchemy. And I think it's so great because it's uh, a very somatic approach actually, because what, you know, it starts with that thinking and feeling, but it helps with tending to whatever's at the core of these repeating negative loops or patterns by going into the body and the sensations and tending what needs to be tended there or just giving yourself space to shift and move without like forcing. And so at the heads up, anyone who's in the collective, you have access to inner alchemy. It's in there in the portal. Check it out. It's great. But core foundational teaching for all of humanity, to be <laughs> honest, if everyone did it, it would be much easier to relate. <laughs> and it's true. It's true because it's it's not about like be honest and like be submissive to someone else and be like I'm sorry or be honest and like override yourself. You know, it, I think there's these kind of distorted. I feel like we live in a whole, like the world we live in is this whole distortion field that says that the world around us is inert and not alive and that you know power looks like uh, accumulating and having power over others, or as you know, what you're speaking to is really this more animist world where all beings around us are alive and kin and where power isn't about power over or accumulating, but rather this agency, this sovereignty in oneself, but that isn't separating, it is rather interconnecting, where one's own wellness links up and supports everyone else's wellness. And there's this, you know, when I am cared for, I am able to care for others and to receive caring. And it's this like, you know, amplifying loop. instead of negative looping patterns, it's these like caring looping patterns where now we're like caring and caring and caring, not just for ourselves and other people, but the world. It's like this expansive web. And so when you say like the the womb web, that's what I'm hearing and seeing too. And I, I think, yeah, does that land for you? Totally. Okay. And, and the other word I like to share is the womb pain body. So they call it the feminine pain body, like Eckhart Tolle says that the feminine pain body or the like collective pain body, really, that is the womb pain body. So wait, why, why is, why is this all centered in the womb? I mean, I feel like I still like, I'm like, why isn't it centered like in my cells or something? Just like, why isn't it in my heart? Because the womb brings life. <laughs> uh, mic drop. <laughs> the womb brings life. I, I wish that was a sexier mic drop moment. <laughs> yeah, because the womb is life. Right? Like we have two cells we have the sperm and an egg that somehow meet inside the fallopian tube and the sperm gets in there and fertilizes it and then it slowly drops into the womb and then the womb creates this beautiful little nest for the egg to sit in and be tended to and then it fucking grows life like that's in it's insane i remember when i was younger I, you know, the trauma I had had, <laughs> I'll just say, but the, the thing, I was like, what's the miracle of life? Like, that's like the stupidest thing. I so resonate with that. I remember being like, this is so tough. Like why? <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> and then like, I saw a birth and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> like <laughs> um, eating my words. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's life. It, and then it grows this being right? The feminine body, the womb carrier body grows this being. That's so trippy. And then it even grows like the food to nourish this child. 
And then somehow it knows how to release all the right hormones and do all the right things so that like your little tiny cervix can open up to 10, right? Centimeters. Is that right? Centimeters. Um, diameter. I can't remember whatever the things are. I'm not a technical person anymore. I lost that with my marbles. It's all, it's all in the manual. I'm like that. You can Google it. I don't need to know it. It's fine. So you, it opens up so much. And then this, all of your muscles know what to do and everything pushes this being out in an ideal situation, right? Like what, what is that? That is why the womb is so important, right? Because it is life. And we can look at, you know, all sorts of different metaphors outside in nature, the great waters of the earth being the womb, the caves, representing the womb. And it's that place of going inside. Because if we don't have that relationship with our inside, with our inner self, and we're always looking outside, then we aren't going to get it. We're going to maybe miss a big purpose of why we're here. Potentially, perhaps. And so this womb pain body, the way that I see it is like all of our ancestors that were womb carriers and all that they held in their bodies, all the things that they said yes to because they couldn't say no, because it, it was there was no permission to say no, or they would be burned or like the consequences over time have been quite grave for many of our ancestors. And so that is living in the collective field. And so we see it perpetuated in family dynamics is the easiest way that I can um, speak to seeing it. It's like, let's say I have a child and my mom is being really weird. So then she's mad at me. So she won't come see the baby. And then now she's, you know, yelling at the dad who they're divorced and da, da, da. And then it creates, it's like, we, why are you putting your weird stuff on this baby? It's a new life. Like, what are you doing? Right. So we can see that in the movies, or we can see that when we, when we witness a family dynamic where everything is like just off, that's the literal perpetuating the same cycles of generations past. And so the beautiful thing is as we do our healing, which womb healing is just your healing, as we do our healing journey, as we really get to the depths and meet those places within and bring healing to them, alchemize them, transform them, we are creating access points in the collective fabric for somebody in India to all of a sudden what, ooh, I just received a transmission of how that's possible to get out of this dynamic or to change something inside of me related to my external environment, right? So every time we do healing, it's helping the collective field. We can even look at that, just looking at the greater worldview of where we are in this day and age from where we were when I started womb healing. Like it's a completely different world now. There's like tons of books on it. There's womb healers all over the place from what I I guess they're also in my field, but uh, I see them everywhere. It's like they're popping up like baby lions, right? And so that's that's that means that we created access points through the work that we did so that it's more accessible now. And the more that we do now means the more that accessible it's going to be for future generations. So to me, the womb is more about a metaphor than just this like organ. Love it. Thank you. And in that I'm hearing even, you know, you're talking about worldview a lot and I'm reading this amazing book. It's called Restoring the Kinship Worldview. And 
it's Indigenous Voices introduced 28 Precepts for Rebalancing Life on Planet Earth. I'm loving it because they're they're really um they're really highlighting like what is a worldview and what are the kind of two worldviews, which is like that inert world to extract and dominate, or the living world that is rooted, you know, indigenous cultures are rooted in and they're it's it's this book's amazing. But what I'm hearing you speak to in this too is like uh the womb as the metaphor and even the womb as the physical organ and with from which we've all come and from you know which certain people carry is that shift towards a worldview that is rooted in serving life and aliveness and that doesn't mean like pro-life i just want to be very clear we're not like being like conservative republicans here but in in, intending life not dominance and extraction but rather this uh this interconnectedness and and through this womb healing we are um we are integrating unraveling and integrating what we've inherited essentially like you said like from our ancestors what they went through that was then held in the in their own vibration and their resonance and then you know there's now research that shows like these these things can actually be passed down you know ancestral trauma can actually be passed down like so wild and here we are able to shift that and heal that and so you know you're working with the physical womb and with the metaphoric womb and shifting towards that which tends life yeah it's pretty deep (laughs) (laughs) the metaphor for like everything (laughs) for like life itself it's just that cool i dig it and you know i so resonate with your story too of being like like not wanting to go to ecstatic dance and not being like like because trauma because trauma like trauma was like it's not safe (laughs) don't do that and you know that trauma healing journey i i would like to get a little more into that aspect of maybe examples what of what does trauma-informed womb healing look like versus not trauma-informed womb healing if you're willing to get into that um i want to say that i push my nature might be to push myself and put myself in in the past situations that I knew were unsafe because I still valued potentially what I would learn from the experience or the training or the teacher, even though I could see that they weren't trauma informed. And so I put myself in a lot of different situations, y'all like a lot. Um, And so I really got to see like the when it's not trauma informed. So one of the examples is at my Tantra training that I went to and, you know, much respect to the teachers. They did the best that they can with what they knew. But I think also if you haven't gone through trauma, it's hard to know that you're not being trauma informed. Yeah. And even if you have walked through it, you don't know what what being trauma informed is. And even I was just having a conversation with my friend Kat Lee, who's been on the show about like, even if you understand the nervous system and how it works, that doesn't even mean you're trauma informed. It's like, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Ugh. Yeah, It's a lot. So at one point, um, I was assisting at this one and this woman, they were doing a dance, dancing it out. And this woman starts like, bleh, bleh, like all over the place. And she just like, bleh. and I was like, oh my goodness. And I went up to her and I just gently held her shoulder. And I was like, honey, we need to have a little talk. Like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm getting rid of and releasing stuff. And I was like, okay, so where are you releasing it to? Like, are you directing that energy? Because what I saw was she was viewing it everywhere, right? And let's say you don't know how to be in a group dynamic because many of us who are had a lot of trauma, we tend to be absorby. And we tend to be hyper vigilant in our, you know, is it safe? Is it safe? Is it safe? You know, we got our like laser Jedi, like what's going on? Something's fucking weird. And I don't know what's wrong, but now I feel weird and I'm sick or I'm, you know, like we have this thing. I have to people please to make sure that everything I have to fix it. So I just had this conversation with her and I was like, you know, whenever you're releasing something, we need to one, like first ask permission to, we need to direct the energy. And then we need to like seal that, right? So like, 
If you're like, ah, ah, like vomiting, right? You, when you're like literally vomiting, you vomit into a bucket or a toilet in general, right? So you're vomiting into something. So that's like being more clear and directive rather than projectile vomiting, like spinning around the room and like getting it everywhere, right? Like that's pretty lame. I don't want to clean that up. I'll, I'll also throw up because I'm too mirrory, right? So I had this moment with her, like, what are you doing? And so the thing is, is that as a space holder, they didn't talk about that. There was no clarification when you're inside of even just a simple ritual of dancing. That if you're moving people through a group, through clearing something, you have to, as a space holder, be very um, epic in holding that container to keep everyone safe, but also to um, be energetically hygienic, right? And uh, so I had that conversation with the student and she was like, whoa, that's really deep. I hadn't thought of that. Right. And so that helped everyone else to be, to feel more safe because we always, we all know what it's like to have that one person in the class also, you know, (laughs) the one person in the class and you're like, oh man, this is like keeping me from being able to drop in. Right. Or like what's going on over there because they're being so intensely loud. So that also means to be trauma informed. It would also mean that in a group dynamic, before we even did the dance ceremony, that we might want to say something like, okay, my loves, we're in an educational environment with surrounded by community. So let's be in right relationship to everyone else also. So have your own experience, but also know that you're in an educational environment. So what I mean by that is this isn't a, a one-off session and a one-off session, it's, you can let go beyond letting go, right? Because it's just me and you, I'm holding that. But inside of a group environment, when you're learning something, it, you want to let your nervous system know, like, this isn't the time to like go all out, like in this moment, it might not be safe for me because the teacher, the facilitator maybe can't hold me the way that I might need to be held while I'm going all out with like energetic vomiting and screaming and stuff. Although when you come to my classes, that does happen, but I got you, right? I got you. And the, the energy is created so that that can happen and everyone still feels safe because they know I'm holding a good container. So I feel like that's, that's an example difference, right? So even in, um, I do holistic pelvic work. So even in the holistic pelvic work training with a, you know, well-known physical therapist, um, I'm getting my Yoni worked on and people are like outside of the curtains, like talking about traumatic stories of their own stuff. Like, the assistants who were holding space, they were supposed to be holding space. And they're like, blah, 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 blah. And then I, and I, and I won't say any of the words here. So we don't need to do trigger warnings, but I'm like receiving pelvic work inside my vagina. And I'm hearing these space holders that are, should be space holding, just telling traumatic stories while people are in a state of receiving. That's also like not trauma informed, right? So in those ways, it's like we need to do the best we can as space holders to create a safe environment for our participants, because even if I create a safe environment, doesn't mean you're going to feel safe, right? But I want you to know that I'm holding it so that you can, if your nervous system can drop in there, that you can feel that you are safe. Right. And that means that you have to be pretty, there's sort of an orchestration that has to be happening on the energetic level. You need to be an epic tracker, right? So that you can pay attention to everything that's happening inside of that group dynamic so that you can hold that trauma informed space. And there's, mm, what do I want to call it? There's like um, behind the scenes things that the, that the space holder does. And there's a lot of that. And then it's so important also for you all who are holding the space to not absorb the energies of the group. Like one of the pieces in the cacao uh, facilitator initiation training that I share is like, you need to do the things that you need to do to take care of yourself so that you don't 
facilitate ceremony and not knowingly, unknowingly, I didn't get taught this, you might be taking on all of the shit that the group is going to clear in that ceremony. All of a sudden you start having weird things happening in your life right before that ceremony happens and you're going, what is happening? And then, or after you feel exhausted and you're out for days because there were some things that didn't happen that were in place for you to be protected. I don't love that word, but we'll use it for lack of a better one in your own field so that you don't take on all of the stuff of the group. Because it happens. It happens in sessions one-on-one. It happens in rituals with people. Maybe you've experienced that with holding the rituals and ceremonies that y'all do. Um, It can happen. And you're like, what is going on? Why is this happening? What's like, and then you go to even work with that client and you go to the session and everything you've been experiencing is like what their problem is that they're coming to you for. And you're like, that's weird. (laughs) What's going on? Yeah, I've definitely seen and heard, you know, this is a common experience. And I think I want to just name something too of what you're tracking is you're track as as a facilitator and what you're teaching people to do too is tr- part of what you're tracking is looking at the signs of whether someone is going into that trauma response. And, you know, you're you're not only holding space, but tracking like, okay. Here's someone going into a trauma response. How do we how do we help guide them back to safety and not just you know be like oh that's I I think that where a lot of uh and like I've made this mistake too because I just didn't know but as a space holder and growing you know growing my understanding and abilities involved learning this through receiving this and through witnessing it in certain ways of um. People like opening up ceremony and ritual opens up some big space and you don't know what's going to come through. And just because you know how to open up ritual space doesn't mean you know how to help people move through it and integrate it and then put that to practice in their lives without getting totally crushed by it. And if you're someone like me who has been through or like you who's been through a lot of trauma and who doesn't really know how to regulate their nervous system, then just throwing people into these spaces, it might help, you know, they might have an experience in an aha moment, then they might spend 10 years unpacking and kind of healing from whatever freaky shit was brought up when having a a trauma-informed facilitator could actually help them integrate so much faster. Because like part of trauma healing, let's just be real, is stuff, you know, you're facing the stuff that hurts. (laughs) You know, you got to face it and come back to safety. Like you don't have to go deep into it. You don't have to wallow in it. You don't have to do all that. But like, stuff comes up. That's just part of healing. But um, yeah, I don't know. Does, does what I say made, did, does what I say made sense? Yeah. As you were talking, I had this like vision of since we can use new age law of attraction sort of as a, as a metaphor here. So I was just seeing like, you know, how there's the people that are like, no, like be positive. Like, oh, that was a negative thing. I love that I have to change my voice to something (laughs) ridiculous as I'm this person, but it goes together. Okay. So it's like, no, like just be positive or like, oh my God, you just said that so negatively. And it's sort of that toxic um, bypassing, toxic positivity that comes with manifestation uh, community. Um, Okay. So there's that same you got to stay high vibe. <laughs> got to stay high vibe. Which like, I'm n- I just want to say there's nothing wrong with being high vibe, but forcing, it's like you said earlier, with you believe you have to always be happy and you can't, and then you're going to like shame and blame yourself. And then you can go in this spiral. It's the same with high vibe. I just got to say that. So true. So what I was seeing when you were talking about uh, saying that is that the same thing is happening with womb healing, because it's about sexuality now. And sexuality is that toxic positivity as a metaphor. So I'm not saying sexuality is toxic at all. Like, hell yeah, get it, baby. Like let's activate it. But there's something where they're skipping all of the steps and then they're just like, oh my God, like pleasure wands and like yoni eggs. And like, let's just, oh yeah. And let's just be, and that's beautiful. And if we haven't gone to the depth, then I can it's not real and it's not authentic and it's not actually like meeting what is there and bringing lasting true healing. It's has that same 
sort of un- overcoat, undercoat. I'm like superficial bypassing. Yeah. And I just, I'm seeing it a lot with womb healing being and related to sexuality. So when I teach the physical aspect of the womb, it's like, we're learning the womb massage, right? The temple massage, self-applied our breasts. We begin with the breasts and the heart, and then we go to the belly and then we go to the womb. And then once we've learned all of this, then we go to the yoni. Why, why not not just start at the yoni? Why not just start at the opening of your vagina and stick something in and start it, right? Well, because that's literally what I did when I was constantly overriding myself with men in my younger years. So I don't need to go and do the same thing to my body that I was always doing or that many of us have been taught to do to say yes when we mean no. How many times has that happened? So we actually need to get into the somatic experience of womb healing is when we go into the sexual aspect and sex magic and all of the pleasure rituals. It's not the first place we go. It's almost like towards the end of that journey uh, in like temple of the womb, right? It's the end of that journey. We yoni steam, we do all of these things so that we actually then have the inner resiliency to meet what arises at those places when we come into presence with like the opening of the vagina, right? And we're doing, let's say, um, a yoni egg practice or a yoni wand practice. Instead of sticking something right up in there, we're just sitting there and seeing what's arising, seeing how it feels. What are you noticing? Oh, I'm noticing I'm getting a hell no right now. But then my mind's like, but I want to have an orgasm, right? So we're just, once we have the skill set, then we can actually go in to meet that and then activate true lasting sexual pleasure inside of the palace of pleasure that is the yoni possibility, right? But we're not doing it from this place that's like, making that the highlight. That's not the focus. The focus is on actual healing. That's a side effect. Just like womb massage, the side effect happens to be you feel better. Womb, you, the side effect is you might have less symptoms associated with your cycle. The side effect is uh, you might be more fertile. The side effect is your cycle might regulate you know, it's not the goal necessarily. Like we want to be mindful in somatic womb healing of what the agenda and goal are often together in our society. So we want to move away from like, I'm trying to get a goal. I'm trying to get an orgasm out of my body and rather like what's happening here in my body. And let me see what I need to do and how I can meet what's arising without trying to get something out of myself, without trying to put some agenda on me, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, and I hear I hear you saying it's like the difference between like productivity achieve versus presencing, witnessing, which has all of, actually leads to so much more productivity and achieving, but it's just not at the expense of your true needs. <laughs> Like meeting your needs actually helps you get the shit done, reach the outcome. Maybe there's people that can do that, like insta positivity and insta sexuality. Maybe there, there are people that don't have the trauma that is there. Maybe want to say that I have worked on a lot of people and some of those were yoni massage and yoni unwinding. And I haven't met one yet that didn't need to slow down to be able to meet what was there. I love this. And I think this speaks well to uh, your, like something so important to me is integration and having been someone who had to walk the really hard path of learning what the integration even existed and what it was. And you can't just have the instant result. You can't just expect this one thing to fix it all. Like integration um, is everything. And by integration, I mean, like, how do you put it to practice? And also integration is when your body and your nervous system are literally changing away from those loops that the the patterns that um, lead you to only, you know, that, that keep you from feeling safe. You are literally growing new pathways back to safety. And that's what healing is in the nervous system, essentially, in like a nutshell. And so 
uh, I love what you offer is, is so it, you are holding space for people to go on their personal healing journey and also to become practitioners to hold space for others on their healing journeys. But everything starts with people entering temple of the womb and experiencing all of these practices and their in their own body, in their own healing journey. Like every single person who becomes a practitioner with you has to walk through a year of just doing this work on and with themselves before they even ever have the opportunity to start working with clients. So do you want to take us through that kind of like pathway of, okay, temple of the womb, where you work with yourself and experiences for yourself, walk the walk yourself, and then the mentorship and then the certification? So what's really, really important to me as a survivor and one thing that is very, very, very missing out there is trauma-informed healers. And I never experienced one. And I knew the best. I know the best. And I didn't experience, I didn't always have great experiences. And I, I was going to interrupt, like you being like growing up and learning, because I imagine that as, since you've become more trauma-informed and you've, I, have you been able to experience people since? No. Whoa. Okay. People that I feel like are incredibly trauma-informed, working with you always, my uh, trauma-informed. But I'm not working on the body. I mean, we do somatic exercises, but yeah. Even if I go to a chiropractor, even if like they're talking about themselves while they're working on my belly. Um, if I go to, I'm like trying to think recently, if I went to someone and I was like, Jesus, <laughs> Like, oh, so uh, I got a massage when I first got here and um, I was, I forget the exact circumstances, but, but I said something about just like, you know, there's a certain patterns that my nervous system at this age ha are just in, like they've been in for an entire lifetime. And it's, it's not even like my nervous system. It's just like a way that I am. And it's so, it's like become me. And she was like, oh, well, you can heal like that. But she said it in this really like, as if I hadn't tried to heal that. And or like, it was just so um, dismissive. And like, she knew better and not acknowledging what I have done. Because obviously, I know <laughs> um, who you're talking to, right? And I had a therapist that was great for a couple sessions recently elder she was lovely and then she was like uh trying to tell me like what to do and I was like I don't want to I just want to be heard like I just literally want to be acknowledged for what I'm experiencing and so I didn't experience that I haven't found many of them so this is my devotion to why I'm very intense when it comes to the process around stepping into this role because when you are uh, stepping into a role that you're not ready for, that you're not actually trained for, like stepping into like, I'm a medicine woman on Instagram or saying like, I'm a womb healer, I'm a womb priestess, and you don't actually have the training for it, you cause harm. And I get all the people in all of my years of practice who went to do ayahuasca ceremonies and went to do peyote ceremonies and went to the sexual healers and they were traumatized. And then they all came to me after they'd been through the trauma to try to integrate the positive from the experience and heal from the trauma that got activated, right? So this is part of why I am so deeply devoted to being in right relationship with your role that you're stepping into. So temple of the womb is going into an apprenticeship with who? Yourself. Why? Because you need to know yourself. In order to truly step into the role of facilitating for others, we need to know ourselves because so much is going to come up related to working with others. Your mirror wounding matching, your um, I have excessive mirror neurons, so I will literally become the person 
and not even know it and be like, where did I go? I, whoops, I've been gone for like nine months. Didn't even like somehow it was just in um, dissoci- dissociative mirror mirroring. And I'll, I do still do that. Right. So if I don't know myself, it's going to be more difficult for me and my clients are going to get less results. So the temple of the womb is for anybody, anyone, even if you don't have a womb, I'm actually teaching you how to build an energetic womb, no matter what stage of life you're in. If you're uh, non-binary or if you've stepped away from um, the physical body of the male, the wand carrier, and you identify more related to the feminine, then we build you an energetic womb and we start to work on the same practices. Or if someone's had their womb removed. Yeah. And if there's been a hysterectomy or, um, you know, even for those that are, uh, came born in a female body and they identify as male, we can still work with all of these practices because we want to get to know our inner landscape and we want to tend to these beautiful places through these incredible rituals and ceremonies and meditations and journeys that help you to feel more resonant with your true nature, with your true heart as aligned with, you know, spirit as aligned with this great cosmic web of creation. And so that is the first year. And then from there, for those that want to go into the professional route and become a practitioner, you step into the somatic womb mentorship. And this is where you have the opportunity to take everything that you embodied from the temple of the womb and revisit it and take it deeper into your cells. And then also learn how to then facilitate the healing of the Holy Trinity blueprint of womb healing for others and with a focus on the physical or uh, excuse me with a focus on the spiritual aspect and the emotional aspect of the holy trinity and all of that has an effect on the physical and then we move into certification and certification is a year and a half long so the mentorship is a year certification is 600 hours And we have two in-person immersion, initiation immersions. And this is where you learn the hands-on applied temple healing work to support womb carriers, wand carriers in the placement of their womb and their body and feeling the way I could describe the the temple work is it's, it's something that many of our bodies, our systems know from other lifetimes And you step into this temple and you receive this healing and it feels as though you're on this altar. And that's everyone that is because in the temple we have, um, we work in in a triad. So there's uh, three, three people, one receiver, a giver, and then the healer or assistant and the healer. And so you have all of these four hands and plants and smoke and sacred sounds and song all over your body. But in this trauma-informed way that you actually feel safe and you're able to receive as a receiver, but then you're also able to give it. And so you get to learn how to hold in-person sessions and facilitate like epic in-person ceremonies and rituals to support their healing in a super trauma-informed way, along with a bunch of, there's so much that's inside of that, that year and a half journey. And so by the time that somebody steps uh, off of the spiral of studying with me uh, on the practitioner journey, now they're stepping into the spiral of putting that in action, of being able to offer that out into the world while still being supported by this epic community and still and feeling really like, I think the, the thing that I would say is like feeling really confident And knowing that you're not causing harm, that you're not perpetuating cycles of patriarchy, that you're not perpetuating trauma patterns that, you know, we have learned that we continue to perpetuate just even in the way we relate to each other, like 
no, that's not what I was doing when you've had that feeling, right? It's like this, we have these ways that are subtle of overriding each other. And so by the time you've completed this journey, you've got like three, six, like 1,200 at least hours of embodiment so that you f- it's become you. It's not something you do. It's something that you are. And it's the emanation of that. That is also part of the healing. It doesn't create that like, oh, they're perfect and I want to be them power dynamics that often happen. And the way that we meet people, wise womb healing sessions are like the session that I dreamt of receiving my whole life. And I could never find. It's amazing. I mean, I've received one from your apprentices a couple years ago, and it was a book. And I wish that that was just a space that you held all the time so I could go get that because I, y'all, this was like, st- <laughs> I didn't even know that I needed this, honestly. <laughs> it's like, wow, it was so beautiful because it's like this full body, hands on massage, energy healing, plant brushing. Sens- like sensual, not in sexual, but sensual in like feeding the senses. And it was so beautiful. And as someone who is like very, you know, my husband had to teach me how to snug, like touch and affection and all that did not, was not part of my uh, upbringing. And it felt, it felt amazing. And just like, it was like a new awareness around how, it can be safe and pleasurable to be touched in a non-sexual way. It was amazing. You know? So yeah, I love that. Normalizing that. And I feel like, especially for somebody, as we're saying, like I was really afraid of touch. I was very afraid of touch and to then later, like have to massage all body types, every kind of body type, every type of person, People that you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to touch that. Like, I don't know. I just have like, you know, some people give you the creepies. Like you still have to do it, you know, to like, and then training, you know, at the four seasons when I did massage there, um, working on, you know, the movie stars and having to give this epic treatment to people that could, you know, cause at the four seasons, <laughs> random fact, they like send, um, like spies in to like, see if you're, you know, doing everything correct. Secret, secret shoppers. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah. So it, tr- it hones your skills, right. And you're always in a state of diligence and that is a little bit too much also as a, a person receiving training, right. To, to be like inside of fear fear that you're not doing it right, fear that you're going to get in trouble, fear. So inside of this, it's through your own experience so that you can actually, you begin to trust yourself when you know yourself. And when you trust yourself, that begins to amplify and heal your intuition and your instinct. And so that means that by the time you're, and then you're getting like the framework and the foundational teachings and practices to put into practice because everything that you, so the way that I learned with my teachers is like, I would receive from them and then we would watch them do a demo, then you receive, then you give, then you um, assist somebody giving. So it's like, you're seeing you're, you're getting it in all these different ways. It's like, depending on the type of learner you are, but it's like in that oral tradition that is through repetition. I had shared with you when I first was studying womb healing, I think that I've attended 75 self-care classes. They're the same exact content in those self-care classes. It's two and a half days. It's the same content. I attended probably 75 of those, assisted them, attended them, and then taught them, right? Why? Because I knew that I needed to get it in my bones because I can't teach something I don't know. I'm not that 
I don't have that superpower. Some people do. I don't. I have to know it. And I have to experience it. And then I can, okay, now I've got it. I can trust that it's here. So that's the beautiful thing is as you're going along the journey, you can trust that you are, you've got it by the end, by the completion, so to speak. Beautiful. Love it. Well, uh, there's, there's so much. (laughs) And when people go to your uh, website, they can learn more about Temple of the Womb, learn about the mentorship, learn about the certification. But you also offer, if someone's like not ready for that deep dive into the Temple of the Womb, you offer um, the resonance ritual, which is kind of like introduction to these concepts that help you not override and help you come back to your true nature. And that's uh, that's a great way people can start working with you. It's It's not live, but they can get this the resonance ritual is like literally the hack that I figured out for life it's like everything that I searched the world over and couldn't find and then finally found it and was like oh my goodness and it works like it works it's healing trauma patterns it's healing relationships it's healing dissonance it's like changed my entire everything so yes, yeah, start with resonance and then cacao. Cacao's like, um, it's sort of like fun. Uh, I feel like the rest is fun too, but it sounds so deep that it doesn't sound as fun. It is fun though. It's like amazing. But cacao um, facilitator initiation is, uh, there's a two part series. So you can come to the first part and not the second part, but you have to come to the first part to join in the in-person immersion But it's basically 10 Saturdays that we're going to gather and start going into the depths of how to facilitate ceremony in a trauma-informed way, how to really connect and honor the spirit of cacao and its medicine, and how to facilitate ceremonies with your community to in right relationship, both for yourself, for the group, and the medicine. I love that. And you studied... I think it's so interesting how you studied. Oh, gosh. I mean, this gets into, you know, again, that worldview of the dominance of power over versus kin and just all the effects of that supremacy and such. But, you know, to folks who are like, but where did you learn this? You know, you learned it with a woman who, with cacao, woman who's, uh, do you want to just tell us? I don't need to tell your story. Miss Beatrice has passed now. I just found one of her books. Um, it's somewhere here. Is this it? Um, I just found her book. It was very exciting. Uh, she's passed now, but when I was studying with her and Rosita Arvigo and Ann Drucker, um, she was like, my kids don't even want to learn this work. And it was like the womb work, candle magic, all of the things that she was teaching us, spiritual disease, cacao ceremonies, promesia, eshell ceremonies. She's like, my children don't, don't want to learn this. And honestly, I wouldn't wish this upon them because in the villages, uh, in other times, Donna Lihio Ponti would say that in the daytime, they call you a witch And they, you know, try to tear you down. And at night they're knocking on your door, asking you for the cure. And so it wasn't cool, you know, to be a healer in times past. And so. And where was this? Belize in San Ignacio. And um, yeah, I thought that was really profound. And then the other thing that I want to speak to, like with cacao specifically, is that when you're an herbalist, when you're a plant person, and I have like 3000 hours in herbal education and taught at herb schools and teach herb classes, um, you have a different relationship also with plants. And so understanding how to commune with plants is part of my gift, right? So if I understand how to communicate with plants and I'm already a ceremonialist 
on top of my teachings and the transmissions that I've received from my teachers, cacao has also been a teacher. So something ironic, y'all, is I don't really even do chocolate. I'm not a chocolate person, which is so bizarre because everyone's so into the chocolate and all of my women's groups and womb groups, they're like, got to bring the chocolate. I'm like not into it. It's like not my thing. But the spirit of the medicine came to me and was like, I am seeing all these people facilitating these ceremonies and they're not doing it right. They're not honoring the spirit that is the medicine of cacao. Cacao is an activator. So you don't want to do a sleepy yoga class or a sound healing after taking enough cacao to activate you, which is what you do in ceremony. So basically the spirit of cacao came in and was like, I need you to teach people how to facilitate the ceremony and be in right relationship with me. And so that is what I'm sharing through the facilitating, the cacao facilitator initiation is teaching you how to connect and commune with the spirit of that plant and how to be in right relationship and honor the indigenous roots of that and carry the transmission from my teachers that I received but then also just my relationship to this plant that has continually been in my life. I, I'm not even, it's so funny. Like I'm not even that into it. Like, you know, I'm like, I don't really even do chocolate. Like it's so rare when my girlfriends do it. I'm like, I'll have one bite, you know, like it's not my thing in that way. What is, are you like into gummy bears? What is your thing? I don't really do. A- you don't really do sugar. Yeah. I haven't really seen you eat sugar. You're into, you're like bone broth. <laughs> bone broth sounds good. I'm not always healthy though, y'all. I do like tobacco would probably be my, um, the spirit plant that I work with the most. Um, but yeah, I just, I was like really feeling that with the spirit of cacao and even the Ishel ceremonies that I was initiated into, which Ishel is the Maya goddess of, um, healing for women. And she takes three forms, maiden, mother, and crone. And I've worked with her for over 20 years. And those ceremonies, they're, you're not moving your body. It's like you're singing, you're offering the cacao to all the directions, you're sipping, you're sitting in circle. But when you work, it's like taking caffeine and going and getting a massage. It's like the spirit of cacao, it's activation station. Like, and when you're doing a ceremony, you're taking it in to activate your heart. That's the purpose of it, right? So you're sipping on it, you're activating your heart. So you want to take enough to get a little uh, twinge of a heart, like a uh, flutter. And then once you have that heart flutter, you're like, okay, now it's time to move my body. Now it's time to meet that flutter so that I can help move and break through what is holding my heart hostage. And then once we move the energy, then we lay on the earth. The only person I've met so far that I feel like is doing cacao ceremonies and right relationship to the medicine is Daisy Kay in Australia. She holds an epic cacao ceremony and really feels like she knows how to honor the spirit of that medicine because most people are sitting in circle And then you're just continually sitting in circle and singing. That might be something like uh, somebody asked me about, like, you're like at spirit reverse, somebody would do the harmonium and cacao medicine. Like, okay, they're singing, you're moving energy. So that's something, but let's say your typical approaches are to do the ceremony and then to do a sound healing. But that to me, I would, I would like lose my marbles. That would be, yeah. I'm like, do a line of Coke and then lay down. Like, (laughs) I don't think so. (laughs) Like, I don't think that's going to work for my system, right? So we're learning how to commune with nature. And when you understand how to commune with nature, then you, and you're able to trust yourself, right? Like all of these skills that we're teaching through all of the, everything that we do in the school is teaching you how to trust yourself. And to create a relationship with yourself that you can trust so that the effect, the side effect is that you go out in nature and the tree talks to you and you actually trust what you hear for the first time in your life instead of question it. I love that. I love that. 
Cool. Well, I love this. And uh, you've been on the show a few times, so we'll link to all that below, of course. And you've been on a bunch of podcasts. And y'all, if you have a podcast that you love, go pitch them to bring Naomi on and talk about all kinds of stuff. And uh, oh yeah, Kitty just came and was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, buddy. You think so, too? <laughs> So you offer a free resonance masterclass where you help people get to the root and root of and transform one repeating pattern in their life. That's for free on your website. That one is epic. There's like wise Womb merch now. Just bought my sweatshirt yesterday. Can't wait it to get it. Today, I heard. Oh my God. Um, and then there's like downloadable digital ritual books. So if you're more of, um, you know, you want like something more interactive then uh, you can download one of those, purchase one of those. And then some of them have like links to different videos for rituals, like the heart and womb coherence and stuff. And then we have like one-off little rituals that are not a part of like the bigger journeys um, that are also in the shop. A lot of people want to know about cord cutting and stuff. You have a cord cutting that people can buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fertility Summit and all of, uh, there's quite a few there. Yeah. And then, and then of course there's, um, the temple of the womb and you, you open the temple of the womb once a year and you open, and then it's a year long program. And then you open the mentorship once a year and that's a year long program. And then you open the certification every couple of years, I believe. Right. I should, I should know this by the back of my head. I'm pretty sure that's right, but correct me if I'm wrong. Natalie, I can now speak to all of the things that I do. We have done 30 some years of yeah. trying to say what it is. Natalie is amazing at helping you to get to the root of like the problem that you're solving. And that helps you to then be able to speak to what you do. <laughs> Cause before, if you were like, what do you do? I'd be like, I hate you. I hate you so much right now for asking me this question. Like, what do I do? What do you do? Like, I just is like the worst. And so it's been like incredible. So, um, yes, uh, certification is offered every like couple of years. Um, so yeah, start with temple of the womb. And that's really like for, I want to say this, most people who come to certification all the way through, they don't start out thinking they wanted to be a practitioner. So you don't have to like, there's, you can stop anywhere along the choose your own adventure, Right. But the temple of the womb is literally teaching you everything that I've learned in this lifetime uh, from education to experience distilled into a year that will give you the most profound life changing results ever. So there's that. And then there's always the resonance ritual. If you're kind of like womb healing sounds scary. Like if you're like Natalie and I with ecstatic dance and feeling like, Ooh, that's like too much. I'm afraid of that. Start with resonance and we have an ongoing membership. So you get a free month when you sign up, it's called the resonance re membership. And we gather once a month and it's just awesome and put into practice everything that we learned in the resonance work and Yeah, that is resonance has like literally changed my life in every way. Like I am narcissist free for the first time in my entire life. And I can't even tell you that I didn't know that this is what life could feel like. That's amazing. Like (laughs) you could wake up actually feeling good almost every day because you don't, you're not being gaslit. not being like manipulated or all the things, you know, I mean, it's changed everything. I love it. I love it. And so that's all at wisewombmedicinepath.com. And, um, you know, something we didn't even get into is what is the Oracle. And so that's, yeah. (laughs) Can we do a a live one where people call in? Oh my God, that would be so fun. Yep. That's so much. So listeners hit us up with your questions. What questions do you have? What are your like symptoms you're having? I don't know. Are you willing to like kind of, you know, you could ask the Oracle anything. So it's a combination of because of my ability to, because I have ADHD and I'm a Gemini, basically, let's just call it that. Um, I have studied everything. So I know a lot about everything, right? Like that's kind of 
part of the, the jam. And so um, you can ask a question of any kind on any level about anything. And we can see what the Oracle comes up with. I just need to know your name and like maybe even the place that you are uh, located so that I can like go in and ha- get the right person. <laughs> Basically, let's just make sure we have the right person so I can tap into the vibe. That would be really fun. Yeah, I like that. That'd be cool. Um, okay, cool. So that's awesome. And I want to say for any of the yeah. listeners who are um, stepping into creating their offers in the world, who are trying to um, clarify, like even what is the class that you're going to teach and how is it going to help people? And how do you talk about yourself and how do you talk about what you're doing and how do you clarify all of that in a way that's like trauma informed, um, promoting like contact Natalie, because I can't tell you how much you have changed my life and helped make so many things easier. Like I just can't even tell y'all, um, it was like clear as mud and now it's turned in clear as beautiful crystalline water. So thank you so much. Thank you, Naomi. It's truly an honor. And yeah, we've done some deep works. We started in like 2020 before the pandemic. That was nuts. That was nuts. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, yep. Yeah, y'all, I am doing more, um, trauma-informed marketing, education, and consulting. You can go to natalie.net slash work with Natalie, but this isn't about me right now. I'm just throwing that out there. So I- You a plug though, because it's like <laughs> amazing, y'all, for real. I remember like t- September 2019, we got together and I was interviewing. <laughs> we were sitting there in the tea garden in San Francisco. And I was like, Naomi, can you just say, yeah, I was like, what do you offer and where can people find you? And you were going on and on. I was like, Naomi, we got to get that. We got, I was like, how can you, can you, can, can you be like just more direct? And you're like, we sat there for like 15 or 20 minutes trying to figure out how to say what you did. This is before we worked together. And then I still yeah. afterwards was like, I'm going to send you a different version because I hate Yes. You. I remember that. And you're like, wait, no, I want to say this. And then it was, that was, I think what planted the seed for me later to be like, Naomi, do you want to work together? And I can help you clarify. And so I was like, that was so, I love thinking of that. The benefit of you helping me clarify what I do and what I offer means that I can actually help the world know how I can help them. Right. So like, otherwise it feels like there's this block. Like I know I can help people, but I don't know how to put it into words or I don't know. Like when we first started, you're like, so what is the resonance ritual? And I was like, I don't fucking know. I just know that I'm going to go into the channel and I'm going to teach an epic class each time we meet. And you're like, okay, but we have all the, we got to like get clear on what the offer is. And I'm like, what does that mean? (laughs) And especially after I lost that ability to, um, I think we've talked about the breakdown within the group before. So when the grand event happened, I lost that ability to plan and to organize my mind in that way. So this feels really cool because it's like going in and reprogramming it so much so that now like when share when we're when we're doing when our team our Wazwoom team is like working together I can like direct things in a way that I couldn't for a while post that event so that's pretty cool also like so, there's so many different side effects that have happened from working with you and the impact that that's had even like. At, I go to the yoga studio and somebody asks me a question and all of a sudden I'm able to say in three sentences what I do. And each time I'm saying a word, the woman's eyes are lighting up and she's like falling over, right? Like that's what, that's the response I want people to have (laughs) when I'm telling them about what I do instead of looking at me like, uh with like big question marks in their eyes. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Like, uh uh-huh. Cool. Yeah. Right on. (laughs) Oh my God. I love this. Then you don't feel seen. Yeah. Yeah. Feeds into your, I'm not seen. And so oh. this sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. I love that. I mean, I really do feel like, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, it's beautiful. I love hearing this and receiving that. So thank you. It's great. Well, I am, I'm, you know, even though we've, so I think why I brought this up too is because even though we've worked together since 2020, uh, I'm like, in this interview, and even though I know all of this stuff about you, 
I'm still like, whoa, I'm really jazzed. I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. And uh, yeah, thanks for doing what you do and showing up here on the on the podcast today. And folks, you can where can they find you on, on the gram? Wise Womb Oracle is the gram. And I will promise at some point to post more than pictures of kitties and sunsets. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe I should post that on a personal one, but whatever. This is the one that I use. Um, but I will come back with Wise Womb Oracle Wednesdays. So you can ask the Oracle questions mm. on there at some point. I just have needed a little break from the socials. So I do, I am on there like checking and interacting. I do respond well when people are interacting. It's like less fun if they're spectators and less um, communicators. Yeah, you need something to respond to. Classic generator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, if (laughs) so that's why I haven't. (laughs) Just cats. Just cats. You've been you've been on a, a deep journey with your cat. Okay, so people can find you at wisewomedicinepath.com and on Instagram, Wise Womb Oracle. And uh, look at the kitty. He's so cute. I love his little puffy cheeks, little hair puffs. <laughs> He's so cute. So yeah, sweet. Thank you so much for showing up today. And thank you, dear listeners, for being here and hanging out with me and Naomi, because <laughs> usually it's just us two hanging out. So now we get to hang out with a few thousand people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and send us your um send them either to Naomi or to me. We'll just keep track of them. Send us your questions if you do have questions that are coming up. And I think it would be fun to do an Ask the Oracle event or show or something and play with that. So yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much, Naomi. And thank you, you all everyone. I love you, I love you Natalie. I love, I love you, all you. Our sweet listeners and Shauna. <laughs> <laughs> so much love sweet well have an amazing rest of your day and thanks so much for being here all the roads are winding listen to over 200 free earth speak podcast episodes on your favorite podcast app and visit earthspeak.love to learn about our collective community and workshops <laughs>